Today from the Feeling Good Kitchen, we're making some incredible organic dishes just for you with guest chef Jerry Manthe. This one is stressed that all of our ingredients are 100% organic. Why? 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 Because I have a date coming over and I need a quick hors d'oeuvre appetizer that is fantastic. Stress relief with yoga expert Mary Dignan. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. My light shines to yours. Namaste. Jeez. All right, we're gonna squeeze a little more lemon, and again with the powdered sugar, just because it's well. bad sugar. Oh. Bad. Hi, and welcome to Feeling Good, the show that combines great organic food, fun, and exercise, designed to make you the absolute best you can be. Hi, everybody. Thank you for watching Feeling Good. I'm Jerry Manthe, your host. And this is my neighbor, Erin Lee, who's over today to learn how to make crepes. Yep, the lucky neighbor. And I've never made crepes right, ever. So how do we do this? What is all of this? This is, it's so simple. It's, it really is. Let me go mm. ahead and get right to the ingredients. Okay. Um, so first off, I'll start with the batter ingredients. Okay. Uh, we have organic, 100% milk. And all-purpose organic flour. Mm -hmm. We I also have it. evaporated cane juice sugar. Oh. And we have three eggs. organic cage-free eggs. And here we have our kosher coarse salt. Got it. Also, we have unsalted butter. butter. Very important when cooking to use unsalted butter. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put all these ingredients in the blender. Okay, and I, I can do yes, this. Yes, I can do this part. Go ahead and put the milk we'll in. We'll see if I can do this part. Okay, got it. Um, we'll start with all our wet ingredients. So aye, aye, the aye. eggs. Egg. Oh, jeez, okay. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> Got and it. And I'm gonna throw a little pinch of salt in here. Okay. Pinch. So you want, you want That's a, a big pinch. You so. want to rain your salt into your thing. You don't want it all in a big clump Munched. when it Okay. Hits. Got it. And then go ahead and rain in the sugar. All of the sugar? Uh, yes. Yes. And I have to rain it in. See, this is where I mess up everything. I never. I clump. I spill. I. There's no raining. <laughs> it's okay. And go ahead and put the butter in there as well. Just mush it down, all of it. Ooh, that's yeah, a lot of butter. Ahead. This is not a diet crib, is it? This is an organic base show, not low fat. Excellent. Difference, big difference. So aerobics later. Okay. <laughs> yoga. What's next? Do I We're do this? We're gonna do yoga oh, yeah. later. Go ahead and put the lid on there. Okay, and, and zoom it. Absolutely. This is where you do a little blender dance. Is that it? I'm just gonna look and do the blender look. Oh, be careful. <laughs> I've had many a blender accident in my life. You know, that's probably a very common mistake to take off the lid while you're blending something. And I know, because I've done it more than once. Not without your safety goggles. It looks good. <laughs> you want to look? Yeah. Can we take a look? Ah, it's perfect. I did it? No. What I like to do at the very end of the process is throw in a little bit of vanilla. Oh. Just like a cap full. Okay, that's what I always wonder. What is a little bit? How okay. about that? Okay, Perfect. Good. Blend it up a little bit more. Excellent. Now I'm gonna step aside and let you pour it out. Okay. Because I'm a great pourer. Because this is the exciting part, people. <laughs> Are we done? Uh, this is good. Yeah. Okay. So it needs to be creamy. Oh, that looks great. Yes. Okay. Oh, perfect. That's nice. It almost looks like ice cream. It does kind of look like ice cream. It's gonna taste just as good. Ooh. All right, now this is where I put it in the refrigerator for 20 minutes to let the glutens relax, because what that'll do is hold the batter together once it hits the heat in the pan. And if you don't do that, it spreads all out and you lose a crepe. It'll separate, and it'll be very hard to manipulate it in the pan. So this it's just exactly very important. Let it rest. Excellent. That's exactly why mine never turn out, because I never let it rest. No one ever does. I know, it's our impatient <laughs> thing again. All right, we're gonna let that rest, okay. and um, why don't I show you the yummy bits of the crepes? Please, okay. this all looks fabulous. These will be all of the things I'm gonna stuff in there and dress it with, and uh, the, the good, my favorite parts. Okay. Uh, first off, we have some golden raspberries. Mm. Um, we also have some blueberries. blueberries. Antioxidants. Yes. Um, we also have some freshly sliced strawberries. Bras. It is the season for strawberries yes. right now, so you can get them everywhere. Um, also, this is um, orange zest. Okay. This will be used in the crepe Suzette. And um, these are what we call orange supremes, and this is just strictly the meat of the orange. Excellent. Uh, we also have some powdered sugar, which okay. I'll show you how to sift and, and decorate your plate with. Um, so brown sugar orange juice, this will be also used in the crepe Suzette. Mm. 
And also we have cream cheese. Mm, one of my favorite things. And then we also have some organic Vermont maple syrup. So when we come back, we're gonna be assembling the crepes. And we're gonna eat them. Well, yeah, of course. My favorite part. Mine too. Let's go. <laughs> we'll be right back here on Feeling Good. All right, Aaron, let's go to the stove and I'll show okay. you how this is done. All right, I'm just gonna bring this. Okay. That's all I can do. The batter, already ready. Um, we need to get a ladle for that. Okay. And I've already kind of heated the pan here on a medium heat so it's nice and toasty. Okay. I'm gonna add a little bit of butter. You don't wanna put too much in there because then you'll get a greasy crepe and nobody likes greasy crepes. Okay. And any kind of pan that just has kind of a smooth bottom and is round like that? Yes. Okay. Um, the smaller ones I like just because they're more, uh, it gives you more chance to try different kinds of crepes instead of like one big Huge one. Huge one, got yeah. it. Yeah, it's right. a little more, more playful this way when they're small. Love playful. <laughs> Food should be playful. Yes. Okay, so put a little bit of butter in the bottom of the pan. Okay. And ladle in some batter. Now this is the fun part, okay, because you don't want to use too much. Oh, and you don't put it on the flame, you swirl it. Well, you want to put it down there so it starts to cook a little bit, but then you don't want it to sit still. You want to move it around so that it just starts to kind of hang on to the sides of the pan. Watch, she's gonna flip this and just make it look like it's, uh, like every day, everyday stuff, flipping crepes. So when you flip it over, it doesn't take as long for the other side. That one looks cook. much better than this one, actually. You see this one's a little lighter and yeah. a little. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking over at that crepe Suzette ingredient pile, uh -huh. and I'm wanting to know about that one. OK. Because that's a whole different thing than this. Yes? Um, it is. It's, um, here, I'll show you. Okay, it's really, again, not that hard once you've done it a couple times. <laughs> yes, as we see. <laughs> Okay. okay, so basically take two of those crepes and fold them into quarters for me. With my fingers? Yeah, sure. You've <laughs> you washed them already, <laughs> right? You did wash your hands Three before you came times. in my kitchen. <laughs> four or five times, but you don't know what I've done since I've been in your kitchen. Oh! Okay, just kidding. I don't think Everybody I want to know. Okay, so look, that, that's perfect. Did you see that? That I did right. You see? Let me see. Perfect. Thank you. Gorgeous. And now, do you want a different plate for the other so that no, they good. don't get mixed? Okay. It's good. Now, um, what I did was I put in um, about More a, a butter. tablespoon of butter. More butter. I'm going to take some brown sugar. Okay. Now, this is very this is a very sensitive part because you're throwing sugar into a hot pan. You do not ever want to burn sugar. That is the worst smell, worst taste in the world, okay. burnt sugar. Okay. <laughs> Okay, orange juice okay. is the Brown next. Brown sugar, then orange juice. Yes. Oh, this okay. is my very favorite. And if you would grab that cinnamon for me, that'd be yep. awesome. A little shake, a little shake, shake. Yes, please, a little shake in there. Good, oh! You see? She loves Moderation. cinnamon. <laughs> Sorry. Normally it's just a little pinch, but uh, that was I'll a big pinch. I'll forgive you this time. Okay. I'm telling you. Okay. okay. And, and the a little bit of salt, small. Pitch. Little, small right pitch. Here. You yeah. see this? Very good. And you have to rein it in. Yes. You don't just throw it in. You're a fast learner. See that? <laughs> okay, now here's the fun part. I would love for you to grab that orange, orange liqueur. liqueur. Got it, love it. How much of this can I put in? <laughs> Ooh, my favorite sound, okay. Um, hold on one second now. What you wanna do is you wanna turn okay. the heat up. This is very dangerous as okay. well. So move back? Yes. Turn the heat up, go ahead and put some of that in there. Just you know what, let me do it, because okay, yeah. <laughs> this, this could be dangerous. Okay. Oh, oh Lumbe! Ah, look at it! Oh. Do you have any idea how this would work out in my kitchen? <laughs> that would never work. It does. Wow. As long as you have a gas stove. <laughs> All right, so the sauce is done. If you would okay, grab some of... The lemon zest. zest. That you zest with the zester. Put that into the sauce. So you make the sauce first. Yes, now I'm going to take two of these crepes. Oh, I like to do this in, in the pan because it reheats the crepes as well as gets them even better I coated. I see. Oh my God, that looks so 
Now that the crepes Ooh. are completely coated in sauce. It smells absolutely delicious. Oh, delicious. These are absolutely amazing, my favorite breakfast treats. It's like eating dessert for breakfast. Exactly. Okay, now oh. I'm gonna sift a little bit of powdered sugar. Can you grab my sifter yep. over there? Sifter. Lovely. This is a fun little way to- Do you have to sift? Um, it's, look at it, it's oh, just so yes, pretty, right? It makes it, see? I would have just chunked it right on there. That's yeah. beautiful, it's much better this way. And we're gonna top it with the suplems. Mm, the middle part of the orange without the pith. Yes, oh, you are a best well. And now it's time for your favorite part. Eat, eat, eat. Yes. Yes, okay. It's actually my favorite too. Oh, of course. I was just trying to be cool. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to try and be cool. I just want to eat it. This is going to drip everywhere. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Oh my gosh. This would not have tasted this way in my house. You, you keep saying that. I'm telling you. But now that I know how to make them, it might. Mm. It will. Trust Ooh. me. If you do everything I told you to do, it'll be great. Hi, my name is Mary Dignan, and we'll be right back with more Feeling Good. Hi, my name is Mary Dignan, and welcome to the Feeling Good Gym. Today I'm going to show you how to release some tension in your lower back by doing a western forward bend, and then we're going to reverse that. We always want to be balancing ourselves in our yoga practice, so we're going to do an eastern intense stretch. So to get started, go ahead and bring your legs straight out in front of you. You want to keep your feet flexed to the sky to keep a little activity in your quadriceps, so you want to feel them activated. Good. Sitting up nice and tall. Go ahead and reach your arms up straight so you have nice long lines of energy shooting out your fingertips. Good. Taking a nice deep inhale here. Belly firm and lifted. Exhale. Reach forward. So reaching to wherever you can, whether that just be the shins, the bottoms of the feet, maybe you can reach those hands out on the mat. But just breathing in, lengthening through the spine. You can let your head be heavy when you get to a pretty deep point. On each exhale, seeing if you can reach a little bit deeper. This is going to help release tension in your lower back. It's also going to help lengthen your hamstrings. And slowly and gently come on up. Okay, now we're going to do the opposite. So you're going to place your hands slightly behind your hips with your fingertips facing your toes. Then you're going to find the place in your feet between a point and a flex so that the feet are pointed but the toes are flexed upward. Go ahead and draw those shoulder blades up and back together. And as we inhale, we're going to lift the hips for the sky. So this is our Eastern intense stretch. If it feels right to you, you can let the head go. Keep lifting those hips. Bring the head back forward and slowly lower down. Good. And then just go ahead and face me. We can bring the bottoms of our feet together, peeling the bottoms of the feet so they face the sky. Sitting up nice and tall, inhale here. And as you exhale, folding forward, using the elbows to press open the inner thighs or the shins. Really lengthening through on the inhale and as you exhale, bringing yourself closer to the ground. When you reach the deepest point you can come, go ahead and let your head go. It's okay if you feel a little rounding in the spine. And then slowly and gently come on up. Just go ahead and cross your legs. You can place your hands on your knees, sitting up tall, connecting to that breath. And then we're going to take a nice deep inhale, circling the arms up overhead, bringing the palms to touch. And exhale the hands to the heart. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. My light shines to yours. Namaste.
everybody, welcome to Feeling Good. I'm your host, Jerry Manthe. And I'm Rob Arbogast. And today I'm gonna to be making one of the yummiest hors d'oeuvres possible. Mm. Why, why? Why, because I have a date coming over and I need a quick hors d'oeuvre appetizer that is fantastic. All right, well let's get right down to the ingredients. First off, we've got a red and a yellow bell pepper, a French baguette. We've also got some grated Parmesan cheese. And this is yummy, yummy ricotta cheese, salt and pepper, a little bit of parsley, and some garlic. Garlic, good choice on the first date. Well, you know what? Here's the thing with garlic is you're, as long as you're both eating it, it's okay. It cancels each other out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rob, I'm gonna show you the right way to roast bell peppers over the open flame on your own gas stove. Right on top of the flame, no pan required. Exactly. Excellent. All right. All right, let's That's start. easy enough. With. Just literally put them right on top of no the flame. No gloves, nothing. And that popping sound is good. It's just the skin That's... getting toasty and kind of expanding against its own flesh. And you don't have to take the seeds out and the inside or anything. Just oh no, don't get ahead of yourself no. here. So these take just a little bit of time to get nice and black. You and want the entire skin on the outside to be charred black. And you have that on high heat? This is on high heat, correct. Wow, all right. So Rob, tell me about this date you have tonight. Uh, well, it's actually a blind date, which I didn't want to That's get brave. into. It is brave, That's which is why I want brave. something decent to cook and, um, and you know, garlic to scare her away if in an hour it's not going very well. Well, you know what? I think a good <laughs> test is if she doesn't like garlic, she's not worth her time. But look at that. Now, see, what you want to avoid is ashy, gray, which we almost got with that, but I saved it. So you just keep turning it until you don't get this. Yes. You just keep turning it. You don't want to let it sit too long on one side. All right. So now Rob, they're ready? This one looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and put it in this metal bowl. Now I need you to get some saran wrap for saran me. We're going to cover the top. Saran wrap. Okay. So again, it's okay that it looks burned. That's the way it's supposed to be. Yes. Um, we're not actually going to eat the skins. You peel those off, which is why you put plastic wrap over the top of the bowl and create a nice seal. And it's going to create steam inside, which will help the skins fall off a lot easier. First the garlic? Yes, we're going to get the pan nice and hot because the, the key to any cooking on the stove with, an, you know, this isn't a non-stick pan. Uh, you want to get your pan nice and hot, then add your oil or your butter, and that way things won't stick. Okay. Okay, now while that is heating up a little bit, I'm going to take the ricotta cheese and sprinkle some Parmesan, some grated Parmesan, a little bit of salt, all right, some pepper. If you would, just Love stir that pepper. up for me. I will. And then we'll throw that in. And this should be nice and hot. We get uh, some butter garlic mixture in here. I would have no idea how to make this at home. Ah. I would toast the bread on the open flame and it would be nothing like this. No, but it, you can do that. That's not incorrect. It's just, you know, a different way of doing it without right. as many flavors layered. And that's really... And That's so really the cheese, don't... we're okay, just kind of... Perfect. Uh, wait, actually put a little bit more. We'll put more some parsley. parsley. Sorry. All right. Uh, a pinch. That's good. That looks like two pinches. Stay tuned for more Feeling Good. So, Rob, if you would, grab me that platter oh, yeah. over there. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to... I'll put the bread on here. Oh, it doesn't that look good? So that was fast. It was like five minutes and it's ready to go. Oh, not even. Yeah, we've got to get the pan nice and hot before you put the butter in there. And then it's very quick. Okay, so you know what I'm going to do now is yeah. I'm going to take the peppers that have been steaming in their own little bowl here. Now you'll see when I grab these peppers, which are very oh, wow. hot, so they really have. the skin literally peels right off. You see that? Yeah, so you just peel the whole outside layer right off. Get all the charred bits off. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not good to rinse them too long underwater because they'll lose their roasted flavor, but I like to just stick them under for a second. So, let me go to the sink real quick. Okay. I will be back. We're going to rinse. 
Yeah, I'm gonna rinse my hands off. You want me to start the other one? Um, if you want to, you can go ahead and spread the ricotta cheese on the toast. How much? Just a little uh, bit on each toast. A spoonful on each toast would be great. Okay. And again, it's to your own preference if you really like ricotta cheese. You spread it out a bit, or what? Uh, just make it look pretty. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Perfect. A little bit in that one. This is a very rustic dish. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is slice the top bit of the pepper. Just remove all the seeds. And so then we're going to basically just cut in strips. Pretty thin strips. Keeping in mind, you know, you want them, they're gonna go on top of the bread. Now, basically you're just gonna take the pieces that we've cut them in here. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in there. And all right, a little bit of salt. So yeah, I would let it marinate for an hour, but we don't have an hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and plate plate these. Look at that. Nice little design. On each. Even a cooking term, we're gonna plate the peppers. <laughs> Always a good treat. That is great, and it looks like, now, how's about a little bit more? Um, you know no. what, actually, what I would salt. like to do, <laughs> no. I would salt. like to sprinkle some Parmesan. Ah, more Parmesan. And, sure, go ahead and toss a little parsley on top. A little parsley. You do that so well. See, look, I, I, <laughs> I can fake like I know what I'm doing in the kitchen. <laughs> All right, so that is pretty much it. This is our roasted pepper appetizer on ricotta with a nice garlic, toasted garlic bread. You wanna go ahead and uh, take a bite? Absolutely. Yeah? Me first? Yes, go. You have to have some, there's garlic of coming up here. Of course. What do you wanna make out? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Mm. That was fantastic. All right, everybody, see you next time on Feeling Good. <laughs> I'm feeling good. Uh, oh, yeah. That is fantastic. Next time on Feeling Good. We're going to make stuffed chicken breasts, and I'm talking yummy. Today we have two simple exercises I want to show you for biceps. Let's get started. Yeah, we're going to get these going here. Oh, it already smells great. Mm. Welcome to the Feeling Good gym. Right now we're just gonna take a second to talk about breathing and why it's so important. Want more information on the show or the recipes you've seen today? Check us out on the web. <laughs> All right, Erin, I'm gonna show you just a couple of crepes that are very easy to assemble. First okay. off, this is a classic French crepe. Okay. It's basically, you just take some sugar, just sprinkle it over the top of the crepe. Excellent. And lemon juice. Mmm, I do like these. It's very light, very simple, very easy. Do go I ahead. fold? Go ahead and I'm the folder. The way you fold is totally up to you. Oh, so I can be creative about it. Whatever you want. Excellent. That looks ugly. It totally does. <laughs> Come on now. They're all right, jeez. All right, we're gonna squeeze a little more lemon okay. and again with the powdered sugar just because. Bad sugar, oh, bad. Sorry, too much. Too okay. Much. You and your excess. I My know. God. Okay. Been trying to tell 